Hi, this is Nancy with Quilting with Nancy and On Point TV. Thank you for joining me. We are continuing the series on the four crossings design. So this is, oops, guess I should get this one out. There we go. This is the book. This is the book that I wrote. Um, it is a 75 inch square quilt with options for applique on the inside and the outside. And I'll show you some other pictures. But this is the book available on my website, um, quiltingwithnancy.com. So this is the version behind. So far, let me call up a picture here. So far, we have worked on the center block for the pieced quilt. So you can see that here, um, that very center block. I'll show you the one I'm working on now. We also have started the center block design for the applique. So that was part one and part two. These are the two quilts that I worked on in the process of making the quilt. This is one that I just recently designed on Electric Quilt. So this is a service that we provide. So if you're interested in me helping you pick out your fabrics with the help of FiresideQuilts.com, you can contact me at QuiltingWithNancy at gmail.com and I will put together a coloring for you so that you'll know what fabrics to pick when you're workshopping on FiresideQuilts.com. So what we're going to work on today is the crossing block. So in the applique block quilt, it is this block and this block. So there are two different blocks that you'll be working on to create this crossings. So let me show you in the drawing. So in the book, you are going to get the colored, the, the line drawing of each of the quilts, whether or not I've got an applique one in here somewhere. Um, so this would represent what I've done on electric quilt because on electric quilt, you can just color it and print it out the way that you would like it to be. Keep in mind, if you want to know more about electric quilt, I do have a membership available where we meet once a month to go over different um, steps and techniques and different ways to work on quilts designs. So contact me at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com if you're interested. So this is the coloring I did online, but in the book is the line drawing. And with the line drawing, you are able to pull out your color pencils or markers or whatever is your coloring medium of choice and color them in. And so this, I kind of did it just a little bit. For the block that we are going to work on today, um, I think it's in here. There it is. So this is how you're going to get the line drawing. Oop, that's upside down. This is the line drawing for the block and you're going to color it in. So one I colored in and then the other one I already had colored in on um, electric quilt. So this is the block that we are going to work on. And this is the blocks in real life that I've done. So this is the one that I'm calling my TARDIS quilt that is time in relative time and relative dimension in space and for those of you that don't know this is the TARDIS it's a blue box flies around the universe and for those that are, of us that are nerds we know this information if you don't check out Doctor Who all right so this is the fabric that started it this like space fabric that I found here's another one that I actually used in my cats in space quilt and these this is a moon fabric you know what I figured out this moon sun and moon and star fabric is about 20 years old. I've had it in my stash that long, not knowing that today would be the day. I did not quite have quite enough of it. So here you'll see, actually I can show you with this. When I did my setting, I had to cut out the setting triangles. I didn't have enough fabric, so I cut the square a little bit smaller, just added a blue sashing all the way around it and then cut it out. So on my blocks, I have this extra bonus design where I've got a line going there. So this is the block that we will be making and we'll start by making what I would call the arms. Now, before you start cutting out your fabric, remember we've talked about this already, that you'll wanna spray size your fabric. So I've used the faultless magic 
spray sizing. Um, you can find that at firesidequilts.com and should be your local quilt shops at this point in time. And I showed how I use my nice big iron to uh, press those pieces out. So if you're looking for more information about that, refer to the part one of this particular video. If you're going, what is she talking about? Go back to part one and I'll show you how I use that iron and the spray sizing because I want my fabrics really stiff to do these techniques. Now this, oop, there's my machine. We don't need that yet. We need this one. So for this, we're going to start with these arms. These are the arms that we will be making. And here are the elements that you will need. This is the setting triangles. This is one reason I like to have the spray sizing. I spray size them enough that I can like stack them like a little deck of cards. So these are this section here. Then we have the dark triangle. He'll come down to the here. Then you have the three colors that you'll use. So I've got a medium, oops, skip that over, a medium dark, this little guy here, and my dark blue. So the way that I chose to color it this time is to have a dark, medium dark, medium light dark and a medium light um, so that my colors work that way that would be totally up to you and you'll see in the coloring of the um, book how many different ways you can do this and then you're going to cut some teeny tiny little squares oh this is the center block these are my little TARDIS squares with the TARDIS in it um, and I kind of fussy cut them so that he was flying in different ways because we all know that the TARDIS can't seem to fly in a straight direction these little squares are going to be the starting point for making this unit. Now, this unit is what we would call a connecting corners block. So I'm going to take my um, squares and these little squares, the large blue squares and the little squares to my machine here in a second. But there's a couple of different ways that you can prepare the little connecting corners. The first, and what I tell you to do in the book, is to take and draw a line across the diagonal of each, each and every one of these. This can be rather time consuming. It can also be rather relaxing. So do with that information whatever you like. So by cutting, drawing that on the squares, I'll be ready for my placement. When we go to the machine, you're going to see another option. So here we are at the machine. And I've got, oops, sorry, got to go back to my table. I didn't get enough squares there. All right. I've got my machine set up with my diagonal seam tape. I showed you this again in the first video, but this is what it looks like. It is a low tack washi tape, which is kind of like a masking tape. That goes on my machine, and I've left it on through this entire project. I've also left on my guidelines for seam her seam guide that I'm going to show you how to use when we're actually piecing the block together. But for starting with making these little blue squares with the connecting corners, I'll be using my diagonal seam tape from Cluck Cluck Sew. I also have put on my open toe applique foot. Now I did not just do that for so that you can actually see what I'm stitching. I did that because I actually enjoy using that when I'm trying to sew on lines. I just find it more accurate. I also am using a 50 weight cotton thread. So now I'm going to take these little squares. So I'm going to start out with the ones that I've drawn on. All right. The idea is you're making the diagonal go across one of the corners and then you're going to sew on that line that's simple enough right so that could be one I'll get my second one that I've drawn on this time I'm going to put it on the opposite side just so that the blocks can fit together nicely instead of here I have to kind of overlap the little squares, which obviously is not a big deal, but just little things by alternating, like alternating the side, just to make things go a little bit smoother. So this is how you would do it if you were using the drawn line. If you are going to use the diagonal tape, there's no drawing necessary. You put your little square on and you line up the red center line with the top 
corner of your small square and then line up the bottom corner of the small square on the bottom of the red line. And when you are stitching this, you're not looking at the needle. Instead, you are looking at the bottom square, the bottom corner. You wanna keep your eyes focused on that bottom corner so that you're lining it up properly. After you've sewn on one side, cut off the other pieces, spin that around and now I'm going to sew on the other side. I don't have to do the cutting and pressing before I do that. I can just line this up and now I can sew on the other side. Again, just lining up that diagonal with the corner. Couple more. alternating the way that they are on the sewing machine just because then it goes pretty smooth and I normally will do you know I don't know 10 of these at a time easily I'm not just going to do one arm at a time I'm going to be more efficient than that and do I mean there's four for each block so let's say I'm going to work on you know four blocks at a time to do them all at once that's an option but it does there's a lot of these to do so maybe you don't want to do that that would be up to you it just gets a little monotonous because there's so many of them then I'm going to go off onto my ender at this point I'm going to go to my sewing machine I'm going to cut off this section here and then press this over so that's what my block will look like so I'm going to go and do that now, and then when I come back, I'll show you the next step. All right, I have those little connecting corners done. All of those are done, and now I'm going to start constructing that little arm. So for that little arm, you need to create quite a few setting, small setting triangles. These and the dark blue. Oh, there's the arm. That'll be helpful. These and the dark blue, the dark blue going here, and these are this way. So the idea when you're cutting setting triangles, you want to be sure your fabric has been stiffened with the spray sizing. And then you're going to cut it on the diagonal twice. So I will usually stack up maybe 8 to 10 at a time. Then spin and cut the diagonal in the other direction. So now I have four setting triangles and the reason you need to have a setting triangle is because you need for the outside edge or it's going to be best for the outside edge of this entire block for this to be on the straight of grain to not be the bias edge as the bias edge is quite stretchy so this way you're creating the triangles with the bias edge on the inside and the straight of grain on the outside all right so now you can use one of your smaller rulers I like to stack up my the pieces I'm going to sew on my ruler so I keep everything straight we're going to take the three colors then the setting triangles and then looking at my little block here I said oops I'll scooch it all down there this kind of looks like he's been in an earthquake there's been a tremor there's been a tremor okay and then the one more going on the outside. This is how he's going to be constructed. So to do this, you're going to start with the smaller section here. Then you're going to add the two triangles to this piece. And this, that's how it's drawn up in the book too. So it's really easy to follow. Then the last one and then this. So let me go to my machine. I'll get this piece and then I'll come right back. I have my units, those setting triangles sewed onto the squares that were made with the connecting corners. Keep in mind, these seams will be pressed toward the triangles, toward the C fabric triangles. Just a word of caution. It can get confusing when you're putting these triangles on. It is not hard to, instead of sewing this triangle here, to sew it like this. Um, it is not hard to get confused when you do that. So just be very methodical. Maybe when you put this on, be sure you put a pin in there, something like that, so that you don't have to take things out because taking a seam out after it's been sewn and it's a diagonal seam is not going to be a good thing. So with all of these 
pressed toward the triangles. You can see then how they will butt together. And so I'm going to take these to the sewing machine, but before I do, I can pin them. So if I take these two units, I can zzz, crash that seam together because one seam is going to the right and the other is going to the left. And then I can put my pin right there to hold it. So I'm positive I'm going to get as good of a connection as possible. And then here goes the next one. Ksh, crash him together and then put my pin in. So now I'm going to go to the machine. Now at the machine, I still have my open toe applique foot on, but now I will be using the guidelines for quilting guide here on the side. I won't be using the lines on the diagonal tape. So like I mentioned before, I leave them there until they peel off by themselves so that I can just keep reusing them and reusing them. I did move my needle over. So now my needle is moved over so that from the edge of my foot, to the needle position is that scant quarter of an inch. Now I'm ready to start piecing these, they're butt together. Now I can just lie, guide this right here next to my guidelines, my pin, because I'm using my clover glass head pins. See how the ball of the head actually rests over here on the side? That means that it's going to, I'm gonna slow down my machine a little bit. There we go. The ne pin, needle is just gonna glide right over top of that pin okay and we're going to get to the end here that guideline really helps make a difference now here i find it not so easy to actually sew a point in there so when possible flip over your piece and sew it the other way so it's going to be a little easier to start sewing on the back side of this, if you will, instead of trying to sew at a very, very point there. Now my pin is in upside down, so I am gonna take it out this time because it wouldn't have stayed flat. When I get to the end, I'm gonna pick up my ender piece. Keep, keeping cautious to make sure that that seam doesn't get narrow at the point. That is a common error when you're sewing points is that the seam allowance right here, and I even did it, even after I told you not to, right? So here I had a really good scant quarter inch, and as I got to the point, I let it get a little bit narrow. Work really hard to try to get that seam to go straight and not get narrow. Will it be a problem? No, it'll, it'll work out in the end. Um, I wouldn't take it out by any means, but just know that that's a something for you to be conscious of, that you don't want those points to get lost. All right, so I'm just going to finger this, press this for a moment and finger press this one. And then I'm going to put these two together. So again, I'm going to put them so that the seams are budding from one side to the other. And then put my pin in because I want to be sure I get a good connection. And for me, the only way I can get a good connection there of having those seams match up is to have a pin in it. And yes, I sew over my pins. I go slow, I use the proper pin, a small pin with a small ball head, and then I don't have a problem with my needle hitting it. Does my needle ever hit the pin? Well, of course it does. It's gonna happen once in a while. I just don't let it happen very often. So now that is sewn together and I'm gonna take this to the ironing board and then I'll be right back with you. Now my little arm is pieced. Now I did do the pressing and with the pressing, there's really no tricky way to press it. Um, you're just gonna press them all into one direction. The seams are a smidge bulky here, but honestly, even if you did the seam separating, you're gonna end up with that. So don't worry about the pressing, just press them all in one direction and try your best to make it be straight. I find sometimes they kind of wanna curve a little bit, so do your best to try to keep them straight. The next step with these is to trim this to be a three and an eighth inch, and that is going to work because the little squares that you did, those were cut three and an eighth inches, so that needs to match up. So to do that, three and an eighth inches, half of three and an eighth inches is a smidge more than one and a half inches. So what I like to do is line up the center of this little arm at 
that one and a half plus a smidge. So it's actually a sixteenth of an inch if we're being very specific. And I'm going to do that all the way down so that I know that at least my center, oops, let me scooch it up there a little bit. My center is going to be in the middle. And then you'll trim off these little edges. And then line it up at three and an eighth inches. And then on the bottom of this, which this is, there's no magic, magic to this, but the idea is that the corner here needs to be trimmed so that it's the dark triangle and the or yellow triangle are coming right to that angle. So at the top and the bottom. So line your ruler up. Sometimes you'll have it be more, sometimes it'll be less. I don't know why, I just know that it does. I'm gonna line it up so that I can trim off the dark triangle on the edge so that the corners actually meet right there. You will understand why when you put the block together. So I've got four of these all cut. Now it's time to cut my setting triangles. So the large setting triangles, oops, I'm gonna do this one first. So this is the corner blocks. And with the corner blocks, you have your two design fabrics and then your two inside fabrics. And you see how the four um, legs come together. And then by trimming it off, you're able to get that to actually match up pretty well. So there's four of these and then four of these. And I mention this in particular because in my case, I have a directional print on one of my setting triangles. So when you are using a directional print on a setting triangle, your quilt just will look super fun and cool because it'll be different. But here's the idea. Let's imagine that this is a fabric that has a directional print, my little lines here. You're going to cut the square. In this case, it's 12 and 3 quarter inches, bigger than it needs to be. I always try to cut them larger. You're going to cut it on the diagonal twice, just like we did with the small the small setting triangles on those little arms. So cutting it twice. But here is the tricky part where you want to be cautious. You want to be conscious. I think conscious is the word. When you do that, you are creating a top piece because it's directional, a bottom piece, a right side, and a left side. So if your fabric is a light color, you can do just like I did drawing on it with a friction pen. If it's a dark color, maybe draw it on with chalk or do it with post-it notes. But you need to know where those are so that when the quilt is done, the directional print, let me see, I think I might have a, let's see, uh, a written, nope, or new coloring for center block. Nope, TARDIS crossing block. You can kind of see that a little bit here where I have my directional print. Um, is this the new coloring? Nope, that was for the other block. I don't have a full color picture of the TARDIS block, but the idea being is that you want to be conscious of where your diagonal stripes are. So on mine, on the top row, that diagonal stripe will run this way. On the sides, they will run this way so that the line will continue to go. Just play with your fabrics, know what it is that you're trying to achieve. So I'm ready to put my block together. So in this case, this is a side block I'm gonna make. So I've got my one side triangle, the arms, then I have a space fabric, a TARDIS fabric, dun, da, da, da. my other arms, Another TARDIS fabric goes down here, and in this case, my striped arm fabric goes here. So this will work out in my design um, to have these here. These will actually come together. Uh, let me see. It'll be like this. All right. So that space fabric, oh, you can't even see it. The space fabric actually comes together right there can't move my camera out any farther. So now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to piece them together. So these are going to go this way. 
matching that up. Of course, I'm going to use pins. Oh, not that one. Those don't sew over as nicely. All right. Then I'm going to bring this one, do the same thing. So I'll get this pin together, and then I'll sew these first seams and then bring it back and show you how they match up. Here I have my triangle sections sewn on. I do want to show you the pressing. I sewed that half on already. But in the pressing, you're going to press to the large triangles. Um, the section with the arms, you're going to press to the inside so that you can get those to butt together. Just a little point of order. It is good to try to get these points to line up. Um, on this one, I got that one to line up, and honestly, you can't see it with the camera work, but this one didn't quite line up. Does that bother me? No, that doesn't bother me. That just means I keep moving on. I rarely use my seam ripper unless a seam is so drastically off that I can see it from across the room. Otherwise, a quilt finished is better than one that's been taken out a hundred times and never gets finished. So that's just the way that I roll. So these blocks are then trimmed down to 15 and a half inches. Also, maybe consider when you're constructing these, the large sections together, make your seam allowance just a tad bit smaller. I find that the blocks are only coming out just 15 and a half inches, and I always like to be able to have a little bit to trim off on the edges. So I've been making my seam allowance in the large construction, just making it a little bit smaller. So at this point, we have the center blocks done. We've done the instructions for the center applique, and now we've done the crossing blocks. In our next episode, we will be working on the setting or the, these triangles up here. Now in the applique quilt, it is an applique, so we're not going to cover that, but it would be in this quilt, you can see on the top that that is an economy block is what it's called, and that's going to be done with two different choices. You can either do that paper pieced or you can do it traditional piecing, and I'll show you both of them and why you might choose one over the other. So I hope you, I see you next time. If you have any questions, as always, write me at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. I try to get back to your emails as quickly as possible. If you're interested in the book, either the print version or the e-version, um, go to my website, which is quiltingwithnancy.com. If you, uh, I think that's it. So I will see you for part four.